What's up, fish tank people? What's up, dog? Dustin's Fish Tank's bringing it to you on a Sunday, baby. I want to talk today about the Ghetto Aquarium. That's right. Today we're talking about the Ghetto I'm Broke as Hell Aquarium. We're going to talk about a Ghetto Aquarium. We're going to talk about Ghetto Substrate. We're going to talk about Ghetto Lighting. We're going to talk about Ghetto Filtration. And yes, we're going to talk about Ghetto Plants and Fish. So here we go. The first thing we want to talk about is your Ghetto Tank. Now for some of you all, Getting a tank might be hard. I actually have a lot of tanks around, but if you don't have an aquarium already, go scour for them at Trash Day. Go look on Craigslist. Go find one that's cracked, okay? You can find aquariums. It's not hard. Drive around on Trash Day. Look on Craigslist. You'll get one. If it doesn't hold water, it's no big deal because I've got to get a way to fix it from leaking. Here's what you do. See this right here? This is a crack. I learned this from my man Chuck at Pet Supplies Plus back in like 1996. What you do is this. You get yourself some aquarium sealant, like so, and you get a CD case, that's right, or whatever kind of piece of plastic you have. Now look, if you have a piece of acrylic lying around that fits it good, but this CD case will work just fine. This is your crack. Here's what you do. You take the entire CD case, and you don't just put a tiny little bit of silicone on the crack. You legitimately, I'm not gonna use the silicone, you legitimately cover every square inch of this piece, right like this. Every square inch, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with the silicone. And then you mash it, on the inside of the aquarium, you mash it in here like so. So the, if you look at this, the silicone will actually be squirting out the edges right here. You want the entire piece to be covered and you just smash it on there. Ask me how I know this works. My first 55 gallon piranha tank, I did exactly this. So now we have our aquarium. Now I want to talk about ghetto substrate. With your ghetto substrate, your normal substrate, I would typically lay out on here and let it bake in the hot sun and then uh, be, you know, mineralized. It's good for it to like get rained on, dry out, get rained on, dry out. But this is the ghetto aquarium, so we're gonna get ghetto. We're gonna peel this back and we're gonna grab our shovel and we're literally gonna take dirt out of the earth. That's right, we're gonna take dirt straight up out of the earth, just like this. Costs no money, because this is the I'm Broke as Hell Aquarium. So we're gonna take dirt like this, straight up. We're gonna mash it up as best we can. We're gonna try to, you know, chop it up a little bit. We're gonna take our pan that we've a little cleaned out. You get this out of your mom's lasagna or whatever. Grab it out of the trash, rinse it out. And we're gonna put it in here. Now why are we using this? Because we do not want to use our wife, girlfriend, fiance's uh, good dishes. So we're gonna try to use an aluminum one. If you can get away with using the pan without your parents, wife, fiance, knowing, good for you. We're gonna put it in here. We're gonna get just about, this is actually about the size of 10 gallon aquarium. So we're gonna put about an inch of just straight up dirt off of the earth. Good old mother nature at its finest. Dirt like this. And we are going to bake it for about 25 minutes at 270 degrees or so. We're going to keep an eye on it. We're going to kill anything that's in this. This is going to be our bottom layer. And next, we're going to talk about our top layer of gravel choices. All right, so now that we have our ghetto aquarium sealed up, we've let our uh, silicone dry for over a day or so with our ghetto aquarium seal job right here. So this should be dry. It should be leak tested. We've got our dirt right here. The dirt's cooled off, it's been in our oven for 270, 350 degrees, whatever, around 300 degrees. Uh, we've let it cool off, we picked out all the big chunks. Now it's time to do our ghetto substrate. So we're going to add our dirt. I'd recommend you use less dirt than more dirt if it's your first time dirting a tank. People we often use way too much dirt in the beginning. Less is more, use less than an inch. 10 gallon tank, use half inch or so. I've got just enough dirt to cover the bottom here, break up the big chunks mix it around. Now, obviously we aren't just going to put dirt alone in our tanks. We've got to cover it with some sort of gravel on top. This is the ghetto aquarium. We've got two ghetto options. If any of you guys have been on my free live webinars, you should know that I'll talk about two of these options. They're both I'm broke as hell options. Option one is pool filter sand. This is a 50 pound bag of pool filter sand. This can be procured for $10. I'll say that again. 50 pound bag, 10 bucks. This right here is another ghetto Kroger bag. This is actually Big Grow Pebbles I got at Home Depot. Now these are a little larger size and this is actually what I'm gonna use. This is a larger size gravel right here. A uh, little bigger than my liking, but it will give you good gas exchange with your dirt. Uh, again, 50 pound bag, Home Depot, about 10 bucks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this ghetto gravel right here. 
Look, if you're really, really super broke, go to the pond or whatever and find like tiny little gravel along the shores of a lake or something and then heat it up in the oven separately to kill anything that's on it. You can use that. It is nature we're dealing with. So we're gonna take our ghetto substrate and we are going to layer it pretty darn thick on top of this here. There's no need to rinse it because we're gonna do a lot of ghetto water changes here in a little bit. But we're gonna take this, cover it, less than an inch of dirt, more than an inch of gravel, and we're gonna cap this sucker. Spool filter sand is a nice alternative. I'm gonna use a ghetto fish that's gonna require slightly larger grade of gravel, but uh, I'm gonna layer it on pretty thick here. Again, you can use you know tiny pea gravel you find in your yard or whatever, or in the pond or on a beach or whatever. So we're gonna layer this up pretty thick. So, got a nice cap, and now we're going to fill it up, and I'm going to show you how we're going to ghettoly filter this stuff. And now we are going to ghettoly fill it up. First, we're going to take our uh, aluminum pan, and we're going to bend it. We're going to rinse it out real good with our garden hose. Rinse it real good, get all the dirt off of it. Then we're going to place it strategically and ghettoly in our tank. And then we're gonna fill this sucker up. Now we're using this tray for a reason because we don't want to disturb the dirt that is underneath our substrate. So we can run the garden hose full blow, but you can see how it just kind of barely uh, leaks over the edge here instead of just blasting down in. So we're gonna go ahead and fill this up. As you can see, we are letting it intentionally overflow because it's outside and we want to get all that water, all that uh, dirt and stuff that might be in our water column out. Doesn't matter, we don't need to use any decor or anything. We're just getting any sort of dirt particles out by overflowing it ghettoly outside. Next, I wanna show you guys one of my most favorite ghetto things of all times. I forget the YouTube subscriber who suggested this to me, but it's fantastic. Take a single, this is a 20 ounce bottle. You can use a two liter bottle, whatever, but it's gotta have this fitting. And what you do is you cut the bottom of it off. We're gonna make our own siphon. So we cut this off right here. Cut the end off like that, take the wrapper off, and then we grab a plain Jane garden hose, okay? You'll notice you've got the female fitting right here. You can get a, a cut garden hose and get this little piece. You can like clip it on there. You can modify it for like two bucks. You can have your own siphon. Just simply screw this piece onto here like so. Again, ghetto is good, folks. Ghetto is good. And by the way, I would love to know your suggestions on the... Uh, ghetto filtration. Voila! Ghetto siphon tube. Note, the threads don't exactly match up on this, but it doesn't matter because this part will be inside the tank. So we simply take it like this, raise this end up, lower this, shove this down in there, make the bubbles go out, and we are siphoning. And we're just going to clean off anything in the substrate with this bad boy. Water changes are my number one favorite filter. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, water changes, water changes, water changes. But for the, uh, my number two favorite filter is plants. And that's what I'm gonna show you next. Then we're gonna show you lighting. You can see, ghetto is good, it's working. Might have to hold your hand around there uh, or use silicone at the top to seal it off. But regardless, we're getting the water out. And with a dirty tank, you want to drain it, fill it, drain it, fill it. I'd recommend uh, overflowing it if it's outside like I'm doing, but these drain and fills will work just fine. We're going to drain it almost all the way down, and then we're going to add some ghetto plants. Now with this tank, we are going to naturally filter this sucker with live aquarium plants. This is a key thing, okay? And I've got a little ratio for you all. That, it's a dumb ratio, but, but whatever. For every inch of fish, you want like a yard, a meter, or more of plants to, uh, you know, offset that bio load of the fish, and obviously it depends on the fish or whatever, but uh, I'm gonna use Sunday, Species Sunday, I'm gonna use Elodea anacris right here. Um, <laughs> this is the broke as hell aquarium. If you're broke as hell, go to a pond and find some of this stuff. Or find just straight up plants that, um, you know, you find in your local streams and waterways. If you're paranoid about, um, you know, parasites and bad stuff getting into your tank, take five milliliters of bleach, Put it in a gallon of water and just quickly dip the plants in there. Uh, I can't imagine it hurt anything. Even my little ghetto go-go is excited about this tank here. 
building the building the tank out here. Gogo -Go, saying what's up. Hi Gogo. -Go. So yeah, we're just gonna plant a bunch of this Elodea anacris. Uh, you can find species like Liguigia natively. You can find jungle vow uh, in the wild. I really just say go wild with it. I mean, go get a bunch of wild plants and then plant them down in the dirt like this. I'm just gonna plant the heck out of this sucker with easy plants. Dwarf sad you could use. You could use a bunch of java moss, although you're never going to get it out of your tank. Uh, I'm using the Elodea here, doing it with the water partway full, and I'm just using a ton of it. And I'm going to say that again because I want you guys to understand that the heavy, heavy plant load, the plants do the work for you, okay? You can have a light fish load and a heavy plant load. You can get away with a lot of it. Uh, Elodea is weird. It has these like weird ways it runs off, like this piece will be healthy and then it'll shoot off another way. But roots, take the roots, break them, put them down in here. Get this all planted up, and then we're going to fill it back up. And the water's cloudy, so we are going to drain and fill this sucker again. But yeah, plant the heck out of it. Let's talk about ghetto lighting. Now here's the deal. Lighting is actually going to be really, really important in this because part of our filtration is a large amount of plants. Okay, so we're going to need a lot of light. We've already got food for the plants under the subject here, so we're going to need... A lot of light. Light's something we should not skimp out on. So, ghetto lighting is pretty simple. You can use ghetto desk lamps. Now look, I have seen a million different ways to go with this. This has a compact fluorescent light in it. Uh, it's a 2700K. Kelvin scale doesn't mean a whole lot, but you want something under about 6500K. Um, but yeah, you could get away with the desk lamp like this and grow plants. Uh, just, you know, turn it on. Ghetto. So yeah, ghetto, get creative with the lighting. Uh, I recommend that. And then also, for years and years and years, I used T12s uh, with my own homemade ballast. I'll uh, link a video of this at the end where I used uh, just, you know, these fluorescent ends from Home Depot, screwed them in, bought a ballast, and I had like a whole lighting setup for my 125. Uh, very ghetto and grew the heck out of plants with that. But now I want to move on. I want to talk about filtration. Okay, so filtration Ghetto filtration, now look, if you guys have the money, go out and buy a freaking filter, all right? I mean, you can get the little ones for not that much money, or at least get an air pump. Let's say you just really don't have that. You need a ton, a ton, a ton of plants. You also need plants that grow above the water. Plants that grow above the water have more access, not only to CO2, but nitrogen, uh, and all other kinds of gases. And they work harder for you, they get more light uh, above the tank, so I'm using water. Uh, water lettuce here, you could use water hyacinth as well. That's a big secret. They're super, super work hard for you as far as filtering the water. And I've got the fast growing Elodea anacaris underneath here. So, yeah, uh, use a ton of them. Use a very, very light fish load and uh, roll. Also, with filtration, you want to get ghetto. You don't have enough money for dechlorinator. You can take, like, you know, jugs like this or a bucket like that, fill it up with tap water, and you can let it sit overnight. And that will remove all the chlorine. The, uh, the gas exchange on the top of it will remove all the chlorine. So you can do water changes that way. Or if you want to run the risk, and I hate to say this, but if you have like a 10-gallon tank, you can remove a little less, like, I don't know, 7 to 10% and replace it with just straight tap water. And it, the chlorine might dissipate enough uh, to not worry about it. Everybody's tap water is different. so But just proceed with caution on that. But you could use straight tap water and just do a lot of little water changes. All right, dog, just to wrap this up, do a little recap for you all. You want to get cheap tanks or free tanks, Craigslist, yard sales, and scour around at trash time. If you find a cracked tank, you can use the ghetto form of uh, silicone and an entire piece of plastic and shoving it on there. Uh, as far as gravel, you can use Vigro pebbles. You can use pebbles out of a yard as long as you uh, boil it, or excuse me, not boil it, bake it, boil it, whatever. Uh, the dirt, you can use dirt straight up from your yard. I make no guarantees on nothing with it, but if you bake it, you might kill anything that's alive in there, and then you can use that. For plants, you can use uh, native caught stuff. Elodea and Acris works good. Jungle Valley, you can find all over the place in the United States. Uh, and then as far as lighting, use a desk lamp. Use like a 6500K or less uh, light bulb on it. I'm also using a little bit of sunlight in this. I think it's important you can use a little bit of sunlight, not a lot. Filtration, big thing. Use uh, you know 7 to 10% water changes. You don't have to worry about dechlorinator or just let the water sit out. Uh, and also a heavy, heavy 
heavy, heavy plant load. I can't emphasize it enough. A heavy, heavy plant load, folks. So if you like what I'm doing, subscribe. Please leave me a comment on the most ghetto thing you've ever seen done in an aquarium. I'd love to hear it. The ghetto stories are fabulous. And click the link in the description box and somewhere around here for those free live webinars. I'm having an absolute freaking riot helping uh, just under 100 people the other day on those. So click the link and get on those. Make it an awesome freaking week to ghetto folks and tank on everyone. Light it.